But we have joining us via phone Nanaya Jantua, who is a gender advocate and a former general secretary of the Convention's People's Party. Nanaya, thank you so much for your time. First off, uh, yeah, how do you feel about all of this, the representation of women in politics in the country? What is stopping you women from actively taking center stage? I don't hear the details of the data, but let me say good morning to your viewers and good morning to everybody out there who is with you and good morning to yourself. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear clearly the data, but I heard a bit of um, most of the women coming from Ashanti and from um, Greater Accra region. Yeah. And I heard the bit about both our regions in terms of nominal numbers. I mean, whoever is in the um, studio was talking about the fact that even though uh, vote average in there, not a lot of women there, the population, in terms of relating it to the Ashanti, they are more. But what, what is the problem? Normally, it's more of the stereotype and also the fact that women are not as well resourced as, as men. And also the, the fact that the society itself makes it difficult for us to engage, to be part of politics. Even when you are there, the kind of comments that you hear, what people say about you, sometimes it's a bit, I mean, unnerving and it's a bit serious. So a family, husband's wife, um, it's a bit difficult. If a woman is called a witch or a woman is called some name because you are in politics, certainly family wouldn't want you to be part of it. But also the fact that they shot it. I mean, let's put everything aside. There is very legitimate cost when it comes to elections, especially when you talk about buying fuel to go around the murder. So some of these things end that women. But more importantly, our cultural setting and the stereotypes. If you are a woman politician, then it means you are sleeping around. If you are a woman politician, then it means that you don't have anything to do. You have nothing to do. That's why you are in politics. These are some of the stereotypes. And I believe that the system should be able to help us. I always say that, for instance, in Parliament, and I always advocate for it, that for the two deputy speakers, it will be good if one is reserved for women, that only the second deputy speaker or the third deputy speaker will always be a woman. And then we know that some slots have been given to women. We have to protect some seats for women to compete, some strongholds for women to compete. And it should be only women. If we need 30% representation of women, both parties or all parties should choose 30% uh, of their strongholds and let women only compete. If women are competing against women, that would not be a problem. But we need to change the structure of our economy and need to change the cultural and traditional setting of where we come from, our country, to be able to help women go up. Even, it's not only even in Africa. Let's look at Kamala Harris. You hear people saying that America is not ready for a woman, especially a country where it is the doyen of democracy and it's the doyen of civilization. And we hear coming up that because she was a woman, she could not make it. And that is quite unfortunate. So I, I believe the time has come for all of us to come together to ensure that women can make it. Make it putting the right kind of systems in place and removing the barriers and the stereotypes. Because if the barriers and the stereotypes are too many, certainly it is not in. We who are there already, we are not finding it easy at all. So even in Parliament, you have um, 2020, a hung parliamentary to the women to are hung. But how do you even hear a woman speak? It is not common. You don't hear a woman making submissions at the floor of the house. You don't see the women leading anything. So we need to really encourage ourselves, and we believe that the system should also push us forward. That even if somebody is a backbencher and is a woman, I believe that some space should be created for them to be able to articulate what they really need to know. Because women have a lot in us. It, it is not for nothing that uh, the saying goes that when you educate a woman, you educate a nation, and that was said by the Party. And it is very key that you really look at some of these things to push you now forward. Interesting submissions there. Um, 
Talking about the Affirmative Action Act, I know you were part of those who were uh, championing uh, that conversation. Now that has been passed yes. into law, do you see this making significant uh, difference in women participation in politics going forward? Yes, of course, because if some of the requests we are making is backed by legislation, and there are laws, there's a lot to it that you need to do it. Certainly, you are forced to do it. Yes, somebody will say that some of these laws don't work in Ghana. Now, with the affirmative action bill, I believe that it has to be made very practical. And that is why I am advocating that there should be an affirmative action secretariat in the women and uh, gender ministry so that it will be operationalized and it will be practicalized and that a lot of advocacy should be done on it. But as we are speaking about our women, we should also not leave the men behind because if we are not careful, we also leave the young ones behind and become problematic. For instance, these days, the growing population of prison inmates are very, very young men, and that has happened. So I believe going forward, we should do it in tandem, but we should put more emphasis on the women so that we can be at par with the men, and we move together and make sure that things are done properly. Thank you so much. So that was Nana Yajantwa. She is a gender advocate and a former general secretary of the Convention's People's Party there, bringing us her perspective on how women are faring in the political landscape and how we can better that narrative.